The End by Camille Wiseman I was formed to be alone, said the moon. The astronaut nodded, his fishbowl helmet catching her gleaming silvery light in a milky twirl. He didn't move any further than that gesture, standing perfectly still in the face of everything. You should leave, she said. People are waiting for you. Her tone was stern, but patient. The man jumped half-heartedly, but that was still enough to get quite some height, by his standards at least. He let himself float gently to the floor where he landed on his back, small clouds of dust rolling off him in the tiny crater he had made. He stared up into the darkness. There were no bright stars for a very long time, so he was safe to look as much as he wanted. Did you forget where you parked your ship? The moon asked him. She didn't want to seem irritated. He had only been pottering about for a few rotations after all, but really he shouldn't have been there to begin with. There was no response, which was typical. He hadn't said anything since he landed. It's over my mountains, Earthside. The humans used to love going Earthside. You are a human, aren't you? He nodded his head once more, as if he thought that would be the end of that. Like an Earthling could dismiss her with a single gesture. He was a fool like all the others then. She was close to timeless and he was a life form so fragile that the smallest flaw in his fabric exoskeleton would simply kill him. Best to get him out of the cold. Out of the deep dark everything. Don't you want to go Earthside, human? No. His voice was soft and calm, but gravelly. Unpracticed. He was alone on the ship, and alone with the moon, so he may not have spoken to anyone for quite some time. So you do talk. Tell me, little one, where are your friends and family? They are not here. Your ship will take you back to them. They're waiting for you on Earth. Don't you miss them? The man stuck an arm wrapped in thick white material over his helmet, as if he could block out the dark with it. Don't you miss the sun? he said. Desperately. Helplessly. There was a long pause, a long silence before she continued. But I am old, and stuck in my ways. You are free to leave my orbit. I don't want to, he said, the hand resting at his side dragging across her dusty surface. He watched the fine grey clouds float and settle. You humans can be so confusing. You have every chance to live, to make the most of what little time you have, and yet consistently you take the mightiest counterproductive route to do so. He let out a small chuckle. The audacity would be admirable if it were not so familiar. Earthlings all share this audacity, the moon thought. They believed themselves to be alone for so long that they assumed they were the lonely ones of the universe, the only ones that mattered. What is it? What am I doing that's so counterproductive? You rest with me, and that is foolish. There is no life here. I'm grey and old and barren. Humans are meant to be surrounded by life. Her voice emanated authority, resonating through every atom of dust and rock that made her up. Not me, said the astronaut. I don't need all that life stuff. I'd rather stay up here, thanks. It's much more peaceful. It's only peaceful because I'm boring. All my denizens are long gone. Everything you really want is Earthside. The man uncovered his helmet and lay spread out on the ground, letting the darkness flood over him once more. Can you see it? Earth, I mean. I see the planet, she said, but not in much detail. It's small from here. Maybe you need glasses, he joked. It was a bad joke, all things considered. Humans hadn't used glasses for aeons. They had learned to repair themselves at the source, in their very code. She was a little taken aback that he even knew what glasses were. Perhaps this traveller was older than he seemed. Besides, the astronaut continued, there's nothing I want on Earth anymore. I only wanted to see it. But all your fellows are on Earth. Not anymore. Not for a while. He spoke disdainfully, regretfully, longingly. We all left. I was the last to leave, and now I'm the only one to return. Not quite, but I've made it this far. <sighs> I'll head off eventually, don't you worry. 
I just wanted to rest for a while. The moon fell silent. They must have left while she was turned away, or with the sun. That creature's blinding beauty was always the most interesting thing in the sky. She shouldn't be silent for too long, though. She was quickly coming to see this man as more of a guest than an intruder, and there have always been rules about treating guests well. You just wanted to see it? A statement, bordering on a question. He nodded once more, and the moon pondered the pale white dots of stars reflected in the inky blackness of his helmet. She saw the separation between the two of them, and realised then that he was trapped in the dark. I'm dying, he said. I wanted to die at home. Everyone says that our home is out there now, but... His voice trailed off as he gestured vaguely outwards, past his ship, past the most distant of stars and clusters, past it all. Our home was never out there. I know the truth. I think, deep down, we all know the truth. They really call it home now. Somewhere out there. Somewhere, he confirmed. Somewhere in the great big nothing of it all. They spoke no more on the subject. The moon considered all that lay between them. Very little of anything, really. Just lunar dust riding the small bits of wispy wind from the sun's last tantrum. Most days, that was all she was. She felt at home, but she knew she was not one. She was no home to this man. He lay there for some time, watching the gentle curve of the blackness before bouncing up to his feet. It had been half a rotation, more or less. Where are you going, little traveller? Your dark side. You'll shine on the earth soon, and I don't want to stick around for it. Did you not say you were here to see the earth? He sighed as he began walking, stepping ever closer to the lightless mountains up ahead. I'm not ready yet. His voice was small, a pathetic projection into the endless expanse that quickly fizzled out. He was little more than dust from this angle, just a slightly larger dot. I'm not your home, she said. He trudged wordlessly over to the shadowy side, and she blew away his footprints as he walked. She would not let him leave a mark. It was a few rotations until they spoke once more. She found him sitting in a flimsy chair, the same colour as his shuttle, watching the earth rise. You found it, then, she said, unable to hide the tinge of warmth that tainted her words. It's beautiful. Is it everything you wanted? He paused for a moment, considering. Mm, no. I still want to go there. I want to die at home. But seeing it is good, too. It's what I need, for the moment. How were you so sure that you were dying? You seem of sound mind and fine health to me. When I left my resident planet, I brought enough sustenance for the trip, and three days more. I don't have any fuel left to get back. I planned it all to be like this. I'm dying because I want to. Because I need to. But why? This is antithetical to your purpose as a species. This is exactly our purpose as a species, he exclaimed, looking upwards like it was the most important thing he'd ever said. Humans are born but to die and we ruined it. We blew each other up on Earth so drastically that we all went packing and then we stopped dying. There are quadrillions of us out there, you know? In places where we really shouldn't be. We figured out how to manipulate gravity. How to condense the very laws of the universe. We've landed on gas giants. My cousin was born on a planet made purely of smoke. We mastered medicine a thousand years ago. We stopped aging shortly after that. We stop dying, Moon. It's horrible. We just keep going and going and going, expanding ever outwards. The Moon hummed thoughtfully. Well, she said, I see there's no changing your mind. No. When are you heading off, then? Soon, he replied. I still have a few sandwiches on the shuttle. We never grew out of those. They watched the earth ascend over the horizon in all its pale blue glory. One rotation more and he was leaving, shoving that small flimsy chair back into his shuttle. 
It did not cooperate with the angle of the door. Safe travels, little one. He waved upwards, offered a two-fingered Boy Scout salute. Thanks. With a grunt of effort, he managed to budge the chair through. He sighed a small relief puff, slipped himself in, and went to close the door. Wait, said the moon. Before you go, what's your name? I'm Adam, he said. I'm going to be the last man on earth.